Sedona does create an inspiration in people because they are, they're awoken, their senses are awoken to the power of nature when they come here. It makes me proud to see how people react that visit here. And there is a look in their eyes that they have when they see the artwork that is in this community. It's profound, it's amazing. There's a lot of artists here and I like that, you know. I just think of all the times that I've enjoyed Sedona. It's a personal relationship and a personal journey to making a piece of jewelry and to hiking in nature. The art that we create, whether it's music or writing or painting or sculpting or dance, it goes out and it helps the world. And that's, that's what Sedona's about, and I feel it really strongly. Uh, yeah, it's just a uh, bliss. It's just, I don't know. I, I want to explain it. It's like a high. You know, nothing else is in my mind but me and the thing. I think it's healthy. That's why I look so good for 105. <laughs> I was working at my friend's clothing store. I was 22 or three, 1967. And I always made things since I was really little. I started at night whittling stuff and putting it around the store and people start talking about it. I was staying with these two friends in a small apartment and they were talking about saving money and going to India. And well, I lived there for a year and one day I had some pieces in the clothing store and a guy bought three heads I made for 900 bucks. I'm 23 years old. I felt rich. I said to my two friends, I got the money to India. Finally, they got their money. We go. And I went to India and spent five and a half months. And the whole time I was there, I'm thinking, wow, before I left, I made those heads. A guy gave me money for them. That's going to be my job. I'm going to be a wood sculptor when I get back. So five and a half months, every day I thought about, when I do go back, I know what I'm going to do. I thought about it every day. And the second day I came back, I bought chisels, about four chisels. And I never looked back. I never did anything else but that. Since that day, I, I was carved wood. Well, a lot of it is the sound of the tapping, the smell of the wood, the way that each wood works differently, and you, you kind of get into that part. You just start working and it just feels good and just, I just go there automatically. I don't have to work to get to that spot. The work takes you there. So it's basically mallets, chisels, hand saws, rafts, rifflers, files, and sandpaper. Those are the tools. And I really pride myself on not Dremel tools. You don't have the, you don't have the, um, you don't have the connection with the wood with a power tool like I have with tapping it and, and just feeling everything. Hear that sound? Great. Usually I have it quiet in here. And then when I take a break, I sit down and strum the ukulele. It just changes everything, then I go back to it. You get so involved. Sometimes I forget to eat, you know. If my wife's home, she'll remind me and she helps me with that. Otherwise, really, if she's out of town, sometimes I work all day and I, I don't eat. But it just takes you, it, you know. It just, you just, it's so much fun and exciting. You don't know anything else is happening at the time. I mean, if I didn't have that, I probably couldn't have done all this in my whole life. But. I don't even know what the motivating force is. It's just, it's just fun. And then people love it. It's like music, it's uplifting. I don't very rarely do something dark. It's just not in my head, you know. 
I mean, you turn on the news, sometimes life's hard, you get sick, people you know are dying. But most of my stuff is fun to look at. Like, when all my stuff's in here, I could sit here for hours and see it not like I did it. Like, is this fun or what? You know, I forget that I did this. An owl is fun to do, a puppet is fun to do, colorful fit, masks. Um, these are a scrap wood, I don't have an idea. I just take a little piece of wood and I'll make something fun. I, I don't say I'm gonna do a whimsical piece today. I'm just working and I guess that's my inner attitude. You know, I'm, I'm still learning about why all this, I've uh, done this my whole life. I mean, I still don't have all the answers. It comes from somewhere else. I don't feel like I'm really metaphysical or, or spiritual or anything like that. But I guess I am when I'm working. I'm centered, you know, so I guess I'm in that higher place. But I don't really know. I just know how to make the stuff. <laughs> A lot of times just coming here at night, sitting in that chair by the computer and just look at all this stuff and I can't believe it myself. That, that much time and work has gone into this. I was having such a good time all these years. I don't feel like I worked 50 years that hard, but I mean, physically it was hard work. I never thought of it until recently. You know, I just plowed through it. Never got rich, but I'm rich because I can't wait to wake up and work. And, I have a fantastic, beautiful wife, I'm two kids. I, I have everything, really. I'm hoping that my two kids will maybe get it in a museum or something. Take what they want, but I have so much. Hopefully they put it somewhere where it could be seen because my whole life went into it, you know.